Hello everyone, here's the promised live video at 6.30 tonight. Uh, our school board is currently in executive session. Um, on the agenda tonight, what they got read in is discuss matters about the, the previous superintendent. So I'm assuming, you know, with legal matters, so I'm assuming he's threatening to sue and offering settlements. And then uh, employee uh, contracts, I'm assuming that's uh, probably Kelly Gimple, since they appointed him last night as superintendent, trying to avoid the problems of Kirk, Kirk Twig did when they appointed uh, Kelly Gimple. So I'm going to start off talking about last night's meeting. Anybody's welcome to join in and jump in. Right now there's nobody watching, but I know people watch this on the replay. Um, and then I'm also going to talk about overall how I think the board's been doing over since January 1st. And we'll kind of discuss my opinions of that. And my opinions are just that, my opinions. And I'm actually going to give each of the seven school board members a grade. I'll explain to you what my criteria is. And it's just, again, it's my opinion. But let's let's talk about um, last night. So last night, the school board met in executive session for a long period of time uh, to hire a search firm for our, a new superintendent. And I'm not happy with how it went. Um, and a lot of it is the openness and all that that the board needs to do. Um, during the meeting, uh, during board comments, April Gillespie said, you know, we don't need to rebuild trust with the public. That was never lost. That's a, a political tool. The public's always trusted the board. Uh, April Gillespie, um, yeah, you're, you're full of it. Um, there has been a major issue with the board as far as trust, um, and that's what the election was about. And I, I think we're getting to trust the board again, but it takes a lot of work, and it's going to take a lot of time. And remember, we can't just talk about, quote, unquote, our side and their side and who trusts the board. We have to get past that our side and their side thing. The school board's there to represent everybody. And that's why April Gillespie and Lisa Phelps are so important and the criticisms that I will have for them when I get into board performance. So the last time when they fired Dr. Baker and the Tea Party 4 hired a search firm, it was something that... Uh, Lisa Phelps had market researched on it. In other words, she Googled and came up with this company. And there was a lot of uproar about this company and why we didn't go with the VSBA, Virginia School Board Association. And it was a lot more money and all this other good stuff, but the Tea Party 4 had the votes, and so they voted for this search firm. Um, I personally don't think the search firm was as bad as a lot of people say because I think they were kind of had their hands forced by Kirk Twig, and they are working for the board. But... It is what it is. Um, and from what I hear, because we, we heard there was some guy from New Jersey who got appointed later, a rumor mill was he was one of the top applicants and he was a fully qualified superintendent. So they, they apparently did bring something to the table. But anyways, that was the biggest criticism is why didn't we go with VSPA? So after the meeting, I tapped out at 10.06, I think is what I posted. And after 10.30 is when the board came back. And so I watched the replay of it. And so they made a motion to go with a, search, a private search firm. Um, don't ask me the names. I haven't had time to, to do my market research on them. Um, and so then Ms. Gal uh, Ms. Phelps made a substitute motion to go with another search firm. And that did not pass. So then Ms. Phelps made another substitute motion. I agree with her on this. It was, why don't we go with the VSBA? Uh, Virginia School Board Association. And here's what's interesting to note on that. Ms. Phelps made that motion, got a second on it, but then abstained from voting for going with the SB, uh, Virginia School Board Association. I'm horrible with the acronyms. So then the board voted and they, they passed a, uh, another search, private search firm. So here's my problem is, especially because there was no discussion about why this search firm what was good about it? None of the board members spoke up. And here's what we learned. Here's what they're going to do. Here's what's different. Here's the cost difference. Because Don Shelley and Nicole Cole pushed hard a year and a half ago, whenever it was, with um, with the search firm that landed us, Mark Taylor. Um, I guess I don't know why I quoted that. Is they pushed hard for the VSBA, saying it would be a cheaper expense. It was a reputable thing within the area. They were very familiar. You could go back and watch the, 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 the long litany of reasons why we didn't go with the school board association. 
That's what I think our school board should have done. And I'm not happy about it because even if there's other private search firms better, the public perception and what we're trying to do is we're trying to rebuild trust between our school board and the public needed that. And if you weren't going to go with a Virginia School Board Association, you needed to explain your reasoning to the public with your votes. It needed to come out. There needed to be discussion. There needed to be comments, board comments, about this is why I'm going to vote for this firm. None of that happened. Um, and, and so that's my criticism. And I give the, the entire board, all seven, an F on this, not because of the search firm, over the uh, Virginia School Board Association, but because they didn't explain to the public. Because to rebuild the public's trust, we have to have openness. We need to move forward together, unite our community. It, it can't just be, you know, the the Phelps supporters and the uh, Daniel supporters or whatever. It's got to be a community. It's got to be Spotsylvania again, and we've got to build that. Which I'll lead into my next discussion. All right, so... Um, at the, towards the end of the meeting, they also started talking about a retreat and apparently they had, um, been having, talking about having a board retreat, which there were attempts last year. Um, oh, thank you, Nancy. Um, there were attempts last year to get a board retreat, to try to fix the relationship with the board. Um, that never materialized. It never got scheduled. So apparently Dr. Daniels has been working hard to get this scheduled and they'd had all agreed on dates. So she brought that up in the meeting. And I'm not going to repeat the conversation verbatim. I don't remember it. I just heard it. And then Lisa Phelps said, well, I can't make that date. And so then uh, Dr. Daniels said something, and I'm paraphrasing, to the effect of, okay, well, what about the other dates in the email? And Ms. Phelps said, I, I, don't, I never saw that email. I just can't make that date. I can't make that date. Um, and you got a feeling she was just being a pain in the patootie, and I'll tell you a little more why in a second. So, because the, the board explained how important it was that all seven of them attend the, um, the retreat together to try to repair the relationship. Then Ms. Cole made a comment, and it was a semi-appropriate comment. I don't remember the details of it. Probably said not the best way, but it was a truthful comment. And then that just ticked off uh, Lisa Phelps. So Lisa Phelps said, I will be there. I'll be there. So Gillespie's like, I have to check my schedule for every meeting. She said, I have to check my schedule. Why did she bring her calendar with her? That's a whole nother story. Um, but anyway, so in other words, Lisa Phelps could have made the retreat to begin with. She was just being a pain in the, you know. Um, <clears throat> which now is going to get me into evaluating the board. And I'm going to give a grade to all seven of the board members. And I'm going to make some people happy and I'm going to tick some people off. There'll even be a little bit of surprises here. Um, and this is strictly my opinion. Um, and my criteria is not how they voted on a particular issue, i.e. like this school board search firm. Because everybody can disagree. And I want disagreements on a board. I, I really do. Because that's how you get to a compromise and the best thing. What I want to do is who's voting in blocks. Hold on. Um, I wish I could have heard the school board meeting. I've been retired 21 years. Um, actually, it's on the replay, Nancy. You can go to the school website and hit the replay and watch last night's meeting, just like tonight's meeting will be available tomorrow morning. So you can always watch the school board meetings. That's what I did because I went to bed. I got tired of waiting after three and a half hours, almost four hours, whatever it was. Anyway, so let's let's go through and the school board meeting members. members if I miss somebody... Please point it out. I'm going to start with the easy one first, uh, the easy first, and I'll kind of get more difficult. So let's start with Belen Rodas. Uh, most of you know I campaigned hard for her. I worked for, I campaigned for several people, but I, I campaigned hardest for her because I watched this woman as people would get in her face and yell at her and start a fight and an argument. She could turn it into a productive conversation, and that's to me what I want. I don't care how they vote, um, but I do want them to not vote in a block. And Belen Rodas has not been voting in a block. Um, my only criticism of her um, is the fact that she's not using her skill set that I saw on the campaign trail like she should on the board. She really should be speaking up more, especially when some of this stuff's going. She has a way of calming situations down. And I, yeah, it comes from working with special needs kids. 
and as a school social worker. I'd like to see her do that on the board board. So that's my only negative about Blinn Rota so far. And again, I'm not talking about any particular vote. She has been voting independently, voted some ways I'd like, some ways I haven't, but she's she's not voting as a block. So I give Blinn Rota an A. Um, not an A+, plus, an A. Next, we'll go to Megan Jackson. Um, I love Megan Jackson, how she's acting on this board. She's truly an independent. She's everything she said she would be during the campaign trail. I'm going to give Megan Jackson a B plus. Um, I'm happy with 99% of what she did. I don't think she's going to disagree with why she's getting a B plus over an A. Um, and you could easily argue A minus and it's, it doesn't matter. Um, but she's a little bit lower than Belen wrote us because she got into an argument with Gillespie that got very personal that she didn't need to do. She let it get to her. And I'm not going to say who was right, who was wrong between Gillespie and, and Jackson. <clears throat> That's a perception issue. Um, but she got too into it. And that's the only negative I've had. Um, and I've talked to her briefly about it. And she said that she's actually talked to April Gillespie since and worked that out. So I, I you know, as long as she continues to work that, I, I'm ecstatic with her on the board. I think she's doing a great job. Definitely not voting as a block. I, I love that. Um, so next I'm going to go to Carol Medawar. So obviously we're hitting the newer people first. Carol Medawar is a very intelligent individual. She's got her doctorate. Um, she has broken from the pack a little bit on votes, not very often. I'm going to give Carol a B. <clears throat> I don't know how she's going to feel about that. And the reason being is I think she's voting a little too much in unison. That's probably how she believes. But again, I, I want to see more disagreement on some of the issues and coming up with that. And I think there's some room for improvement with our... Um, but I do like Carol Medawar on the board. Um, and I wasn't a hundred percent sold on her, but I am now, but I'd like to see more debate discussion with her. Um, so that's, that's Carol Medawar. So let's go. We're going to try to go in order. I'm going to go alphabetical. So let's go Nicole Cole. Um, so Nicole is the vice chair. Nicole is a I consider Nicole a true friend. I don't, politically, she and I don't see eye to eye, but I can tr consider Nicole a true friend. I ran into her at the um, bingo thing I went to for Chancellor High School this weekend, and my first reaction was to give her a hug. Um, and hers was for me. Uh, but Nicole's a very, very strong well woman, and she's bumping heads a lot with Dr. Daniels, the chair. Nicole Cole is the vice chair. Um, and I think she's having a hard time kind of stepping back and letting Dr. Daniels be the chair. April Gillespie has said sometimes it's kind of hard to hear Dr. Daniels because Nicole Cole is, is off mic talking. Um, I can see that. Um, I think Nicole Cole would be an excellent chair. Um, I did support Dr. Daniels because of public perception for being the chair this time around, just like I think next time I would support Nicole Cole. Um, but you have to rein in your personality um, and, and your, your strong personality when you're not the one in charge and let the person who was actually the chair be that. So because of that, I'm giving Nicole Cole a C. And like I said, Nicole Cole is a friend, highly respected, very intelligent woman, but she needs to kind of rein in and let Dr. Daniels be the chair. So her other peer on longevity <clears throat> would be um, uh, April Gillespie. April Gillespie gets an F. Um, April Gillespie, just like this meeting, she wasn't here for the start of. I have no idea if she's in the meeting now. She's constantly missing meetings, uh, showing up late, and leaving early. I meant to, if I, I meant to actually do a statistics on that and how many she's not attended and how many she's left early. Just like the last meeting, she at least Lisa Phelps, while things are still going on got up and left. Um, that is a problem. You're not representing. And I think April Gillespie and Lisa Phelps, <clears throat> excuse me, are both missing an opportunity here. And I'm going to give an example with um, the, the chair vote. Um, so Belin Rodas voted for Nicole Cole. Um, Carol Medawar, Dr. Medawar voted for Nicole Cole and Nicole voted for herself. Megan Jackson and Dr. Daniels voted for her. That let Lisa Phelps and April Gillespie decide 
who was the chair. And I, I agree with their decision. I think public perception of Dr. Daniels was somebody who wanted to work together. And I think for this year, trying to heal our board, Dr. Daniels was the right person. Um, yeah, Mary, I, I agree. Um, you can People can read Mary's comment. Um, and so by not staying, they're missing opportunities. There are times, like I said, especially Megan Jackson and Belen Rodas are splitting from the pack. So there are times, A, they can affect minor changes within the discussion, which is what a minority member does, somebody who's not part of that political group. Um, they can still affect changes saying, well, what if we added this to that, you know, and get compromises there. But there's also times they could turn a vote. There was uh, one meeting, um, and I don't remember, it was not that long ago, that Gillespie and Phelps just blew off. And there were several 3-2 votes. Phelps and Gillespie could have made a massive difference in that meeting in, in those votes had they been there. And that's why Gillespie, and yeah, you can guess what I'm going to give Phelps, is getting an F. Because she's not showing up. She's not lacing up her boots. She's not doing her job. She's not advocating. And there's a way of doing it. You need to advocate a little more peacefully. Um, you know, she needs to get her head out of the sand. Yes, there was a trust issue within this board. Yes, it needs to be healed with the public. Um, work on it. She, she'd actually, after the election, before the new board came in, she gave some indications that that's what she was going to be. And I was really hopeful. Um, and I'd like to see her do that. Um, so now we're going to go to Dr. Daniels. Um, and I have the utmost respect for Dr. Daniels. Also, extremely, extremely intelligent individual. Um, but I'm also giving her a C. Um, she's struggling as the chair of the board. Um, and I guess it goes back to that meeting last week where she came in and made a motion before the agenda was even done to fire Mark Taylor without cause and then abstain from the vote and said she abstained because there was no grounds. Or she wasn't comfortable with the grounds they had. Then she went into the meeting, the executive session meeting and came out. Then they revoted and then she voted for it. Um, she also brought up and created a lot of chaos by having the attorneys that were advising the board for getting rid of Mark Taylor introduce themselves and all that. And people were yelling, wait, wait, it's, we haven't even got the agenda yet. What she was trying to do, and she explained it later, was she was trying to remedy the stuff from the past, that the, the previous board <clears throat> was not communicating with the public. This is what we need. They weren't explaining their decisions. And it's kind of going back to my problem with last night. Um, but the problem with the Dr. Daniels did is she failed to communicate with her board. Hey, I'm going to call the attorneys up, have them uh, talk about their qualifications, who they are, why we've hired them, so the public understands. Had she done that, had she voted for the agenda first, put it on the agenda, explained to her board what she wanted to do, that chaotic meeting during spring break would not have happened. Um, so that's why Dr. Daniels gets a C. I think Dr. Daniels can do better. Um, she missed an opportunity last night. Um, I'd like to see her communicate better. Um, so that's why she got the C again. Um, but by the way, I fully believe both Nicole Cole and Dr. Daniels can get their grades up. Um, then we go to Lisa Phelps. Um, and I kind of already said she's got an F. I mean, you see the stuff. She does show up a little bit more than April Gillespie, but not a whole lot. She's constantly leaving meetings early. She's not representing the voters. Um, there's a lot of people that agree with Lisa and with April, but they're not getting their voices heard because Phelps and Gillespie are not standing in there voicing for it. You know, like I say, as far as we know, they're not there tonight to deal with these contract issues. They need to be there. Even if it's frustrating, you need to be there. You need to do the job. And then again, it seems like she's trying to create problems, just like with the whole, um, um, uh, the, what I said about the um, board retreat and what she did on that. Um, so that kind of covered everything I wanted to do. We're going to wait till this they come out of the meeting. I have the TV on in the background. I want to make sure I didn't cut into the meeting there. Um, do Phelps and Gillespie plan to run again? Your guess is as good as mine. I always thought somebody else was going to run in the Livingston district for Kirk Twig. I think that individual would have been a formidable opponent. Um, I didn't think Twig was stupid enough to run again thinking he could win. He proved me wrong. I have no idea. Um, thank you, Baron. 
uh, Baron Braswell, utmost respect, uh, former uh, school board member with the Battlefield District. Um, if Baron, do you want to get on here and say anything? Let me know. You can either type it in the comments or join me on camera. Um, but uh, as far as Lisa, back to your question, I, I can never figure these people out. Just when I think they're not going to do something, they do it. I mean, it was it's just been ridiculous. Um, I wish they'd either resign or do their job. Um, yeah, Mary Baron Braswell is a good man. Um, not that I haven't bumped heads with Baron frequently, <laughs> uh, but he is a good man. Matter of fact, my wife and I joke his name is a four letter word in our house because he's the one who talked me into getting involved in this all those years ago. Um, okay, Baron, I don't see any other comments from you. Is there anybody else who would like to comment? Um, speak now or forever hold thy peace. Baron, I get enough for technology. Baron, you can at least, uh, hold on a second, let me see. Um, yeah, I can't invite you in. Uh, do you have any comments you want to type in, Baron? I'm going to wait because I actually would like to see if Baron has some comments. Um, I don't always agree with Baron Braswell's uh, uh, opinion, but I respect his opinion. And as a matter of fact, when he asked me to run for the board all those years ago, it's in the middle of an argument he and I were having. Um, because we can argue, I think, effectively. And that one, I actually won the argument and convinced him my way. It doesn't always happen. Uh, I'm kind of looking closer, waiting to see if I get any more comments from Baron. I'm going to give him a minute or two, because I do have the utmost respect for him. Um, so I'm just kind of waiting. All right. Uh, nope, he's roll up. Okay. So everybody, that covered everything I wanted to cover. Obviously, this will be available for the replay. You can share it with your friends. Most of this is just my opinion. Um, but I do like that the board is moving in the right direction, but they're not there yet. They have more work to do. They've got to improve their communication both with themselves and with the public. Um, and that's the summary of it. Thank you, everyone.